Hey everyone, I'm David Coleman and I'm the instructor for this course, Drawing Dynamic Creatures. Let's get into it. Dynamic figures are engaging to look at and they're easy to get interested in. You really can captivate your audience and, and grab them. Whether you're dealing with stylized character designs or hyper-realistic creatures, this course will really help them come alive, make them interesting, and above all else, appealing and feel very alive. If you want to create captivating, appealing designs as those you find in professional illustrations and design work, you can't just rely completely on your imagination. When I see someone really making the work come alive and making it feel dynamic and believable and almost as if that imaginative creature exists, this is someone I want on my team. It could be figurative work, animals, creatures, cars, anything. Okay, now let's go over the syllabus and we'll see what you'll be learning in this course. It's quite a bit. The first course will be focused on the techniques and concepts through the lens of apes. They're similar to humans, so it's going to be easier bridge to recognize the do's and don'ts and what really feels right. You'll really be able to feel the pose a little bit more as there's some ancestral history there. And you're also going to be leaning to the creature design aspect. We'll initially have an animal anatomy boot camp where we're going to go over like the essential information and we're going to work on gesture drawing and not from still images. And you're like, David, I can't get to a zoo. I live in Iceland. There's no zoos open. I mean, there are zoos out there. I don't know. We're providing an extensive library and catalog of live action footage that you're going to be studying your gestures from. And I'm going to be encouraging you in this course to not pause it and to actually let it loop over and over as you can really capture the life force of the animal. To make your work really believable, you want to draw it like it's actually moving and actually alive. And to do that, you really need to study moving animals and moving subjects. And don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna study masters of the industry and the techniques they've used. The Wampa from Star Wars, Pale Man from Pan's Labyrinth, even the cave trolls from Lord of the Rings. The real source to base your own imaginative creatures on really makes your work believable. You see it in real practice in these professional successful designs and films. We're gonna be deep diving into those as well. And one other thing that's going to be a lot of fun in this is that you're not going to be drawing completely out of your head. What makes creatures so interesting is you're creating a new species. So you're not really going to just be elaborating on apes. So we're going to be combining it with another species and it'll be able to create something completely unique and different for your own portfolio. And then we're going to have a final project and that will really push yourself and take all you've learned to make a complete finished piece for your own portfolio and your own your own work samples. Actually using all the steps we've gone through in this course, it'll really sum up to something that is usable for your own portfolio and your own sample piece. I really want you to create something that you're proud of. And we're gonna be making art that's always fun. Yay! And something that's gonna be original and unique. Your brain might hurt, and your muscles are gonna feel alive too. Those artistic muscles, we're gonna flex those a little bit. We're gonna have a lot of free lessons coming out, but we're gonna have a lot of additional resources and exclusive lessons for the premium students. So I'm gonna take you through those steps, okay? But I wanna give you a roadmap and see where we're going. So I'm just gonna kind of jump into it, do, do my own original creature design here and showing where this course is gonna take you, all right? Look how loose I usually start, right? But I am always thinking about the anatomy and the structure the whole time, but not letting that drive the design. Like uh, a ruler for, I could say, like an architect or perspective for an architect, it allows you to keep from messing up by understanding anatomy and all that. But it shouldn't really drive the design, okay? You should let your imagination do the work. So even in its pose, its stationary pose, it's feeling very dynamic, like there's an explosion of movement is about to happen, right? You can feel this creature about to jump off its perch. This, this first part is apes, so I'm really drawing upon what I know and what I've studied over the years in terms of their anatomy and structure. So you can see a lot of the ape-like features in here, but considering it is a, a creature, there are a lot of things we're going to kind of bring into it. You know? So I actually decided to make it kind of like a, it's like a bat creature that's based on ape anatomy. So like I said, even in its, its stationary pose, it has a feeling of life to it. There is a certain amount of sense of, of line that comes into that and how I, I play with line, but it's also my understanding of the basic core source material, which is what we're really gonna talk about in this course. You'll walk away with a better understanding of what needs to be done, the steps that need to be taken, 
and creating your own more dynamic creatures. I'm just doing this one in black and white, but we will get into some color, I promise. Everyone always uh, likes to ask about brushes, and when it gets into the digital work, I'm afraid it sometimes feel the thing gets too homogenized. So I just use one that's like a basic china marker tool. I mean, it's the same thing I use for storyboarding as well. Kind of like the idea of like the the wings being attached to the torso, but I want I want to nice have that nice silhouette in there. But I do encourage you to draw from life as much as you can. There's a certain sense of of connection with the subject when you're able to observe it in its natural setting or artificial setting like at a zoo, but actually seeing it move in real time and not being subjected to a photographer's perspective on a still image. But this is the, the stuff underneath, all the, the, the nitty gritty and the nuts and bolts you need to know to make your work really sing and stand out. You can feel the weight of him. That's another reason, that's another thing that goes into drawing dynamic creatures is kind of the weight of it all. I can feel like they're really sitting there. But I wanted to, this one I pushed down a little bit further because I wanted to really exploit, we're going to talk about that, exploit the fundamental structure of the source material being apes, right? Now, once again, this is just a roadmap of where we're going to go, and I'm going to show you how you can get, your work's going to get to this level and what we need to do to get it there, right? Now, the advantages of digital, I'm just going to kind of drop that down. Now, I really feel kind of those longer limbs, you know? I'm just putting them on the top. If you maybe on the top of like some tree or something, right? Make sure the silhouettes are are not so parallel and symmetrical. And I kind of I'm having the wings kind of fold together like an umbrella almost, you know. So when they open, so even though I'm not drawing it, I'm thinking about when it opens. It would be like this. Just kind of like hang, it goes up onto his torso in here. This is your elbow, and there's your shoulder, and there's your wrist. And you have these long spindly fingers that are like this skeleton or, or frame of the umbrella, I could say, right? Now, that's basically what I'm thinking about in my head while I'm drawing this, okay? Let's see how it kind of breaks up in here, right? Okay, so just, just kind of the basics of when it's kind of starting to open out, right? So thinking about the functionality of it all. This is, this is just kind of a basic design idea of how it would work, right? As it starts to open up. Not getting too much into detailed drawing here, but these are things that go through my head when I'm doing kind of the actual image that's being presented. But just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there, right? So if like if the, if the creature is turned away from you, can't really see how long the neck is, you still need to think about it as you're actually kind of um, discovering the form as you're going through the actual execution of the design. Anytime you see professional illustrations and concept designs, character designs, even the most stylized cartoony ones, it's all based on a thorough knowledge and understanding of fundamentals, a deep dive into the source material. So whether it's a stylized character design on a Cartoon Network uh, show or something that's a hyper-realistic game design, to make those characters connect with your audience, there is a real understanding of the lifeblood and life source of those characters and creatures. Right, and this would be like your initial concept design, right? Um, when you're first kind of getting into it, okay? Look how nice, there's a nice sense of, of, of design here. A very beautiful, pleasing silhouette, even if it's realism. So even when you're dealing with the realistic forms, and, and I'll talk about that when we're actually drawing from life, you still want to think about pleasing silhouettes. If you get a nice 2D silhouette, that's very pleasing and gratifying to look at. And then it's all that extra gravy and whether it's color or pattern or kind of the way you layer the structure, um, a three-dimensional structure in that two-dimensional silhouette, all that will keep the viewer engaged. Sometimes I'll do this, I'll take it and I'll just flip it. Yeah, if it's still, still working, right? Keeping some, I'm keeping all the darks around the face right now because it's just very loose, you know, sketches for now. One thing you want to also focus on is not settling on one angle, one view of your design. You're creating a life in essence, right? You're creating something that's dynamic and, and full of energy and movement and you're breathing life into something that never really existed. You're essentially creating something from nothing, which is such a cool idea when you think about it. So you want to really have, uh, you want to discover it along the way and, and to do that um, is not by just executing one 
angle one view. It's by actually feeling it out from several different angles. Even in its resting state, there's a dynamic feel to it, right? Just by the way something is standing or sitting or hunched over, um, and you can feel like what's gonna come next. You can feel like how this one creature landed and gripped onto the top of this barren pine tree and it's about to <laughs> explode off, right? So um, by thinking about those those poses, like the before and the after, and understanding kind of the, the realism in the actual posing um, and in the gesture, as well as all the anatomical fundamentals and basic structure, you can create that dynamic feel to the work. So it makes it a lot more believable. The more subtlety that you can believably execute, the more successful your design is. The broad stuff is very, it's just, nothing's really easy, but it's a lot easier to play with, you know, the explosive, you know, poses and, and, um, and fighting stances. But it's the subtlety that makes it believable, because in real life, it's the subtlety that actually will, will trigger a person's mind to, to understand what they're looking at and to accept it a little bit more because it's doing things that they've seen before. And that's a great way to kind of see this course. It's not just the drawing itself, it's the dynamic feel of that life you just created from something that never really existed. Thank you for checking out this video and this course. You can follow along with every new lesson at proco.com slash drawing creatures.